this out by, thank, by thanking the fellow organizers for this event. So I want to thank Garrison Bowling and River Herod of Ohio Student Activist Alliance for being a partner to us throughout all of this. And I want to thank Dylan Gross, candidate for Ohio's 78th House District, yeah. and a candidate that will bring much needed integrity and commitment to equality back to the Ohio State House. I also want to thank the supporters and members of Northwest Ohio Trans Advocacy who are here today and have stood by me through some pretty nasty few months with the things we've been dealing with. I may have get, given NOTA the name, but you guys have given NOTA its strength. <laughs> so we've gathered here to make a statement to our community, but also to make a commitment to one another. That statement is really simple. As LGBTQ people, we aren't going anywhere. Hell no. And our commitment is that we will stand united with our LGBTQ siblings in this fight. So far this year, more than 550 anti-LGBT bills many of them targeting trans youth, uh, sorry, <coughs> have been filed and proposed in state houses across the country. Ohio alone has six anti-LGBTQ bills right now moving through the state house with three of them already passed because they rolled two into one. These bills, uh, these are bills that ban life-saving gender-affirming care that out LGBT youth to their families, that ban mention of LGBT people and topics in school and ban trans girls from school sports and force trans students into bathrooms that don't match their gender identity. If these bills just seem like an excuse to be vile and cruel, that is by design and many of the sponsors and co-sponsors are from right here in our region. Angie King and Susan Manchester among them. So while these congressional cowards attack LGBT people and trans kids to score some cheap political points with a bigoted base, we're here fighting for our futures. A future where we never have another teen choosing to end their lives rather than face the hatred and bigotry of their own family, like Leela Alcorn. A future where we the people includes all people, and not just those that prioritize gender conformity, antiquated traditions, and power over the lives of our youth. A future where someone's bigotry doesn't get veto power over other civil rights. Yeah. The Pride Movement whoops, yes. okay. The Pride Movement has its roots back 54 years when LGBT people, specifically trans women of color, chose to fight back against the tyranny of a hateful puritanical culture. Now in 2023, we're fighting a similar fight as politicians community leaders, bigoted parent groups, and fundamentalists try to push our community right back into the closet. They desperately want to erase us from public life, but we won't be erased, and we sure as hell won't be silenced. So I'm not here to tell any of you that this is going to be easy. It won't be. The road ahead is going to be filled with potholes and bumps. A far-right culture has placed a bullseye on the LGBT community's backs, and it's going to get much worse before it gets better. For years, the right wing have played the long game. They've packed courts, gerrymandered the hell out of states, and bought the politicians that sit in power over us. We've got to be prepared to fight long and hard, and most importantly, to never give up. 
but now I'm looking at a crowd in front of me and I see all these smiling faces ready to celebrate Pride. And I am so happy you are all here with us today. Now, I started this organization only three months ago. And before that, I was a crisis counselor with the Trevor Project. And I saw just how many calls were coming in from the state of Ohio. How many young people were calling in from my neighborhood. And I saw the need for queer youth empowerment in our state. That we needed something to help teach young people that you can be okay with who you are. That you should be proud of who you are. That you need to be proud of who you are. And to shove it down people's throats, shove it in their faces, be loud and proud, be mad about it. Don't ever apologize. Yeah. My mouth's getting dry, I'm not used to it. <laughs> Now, I attended a school called St. Charles Preparatory in Columbus, Ohio. It's an all-boys school. In all four years of high school, not a single person came out of the closet. And then as soon as I graduated, you want to know what happened? A lot of people came out of the closet. A lot of people were trans, a lot of people were gay, bi, pan. And it made me realize that these people have been here for a very long time. We have been here forever, and we will continue. And they want us to be unseen, they want us to be unheard, but we're not going to stand for that. We have been here long before that, here long after. And I don't know all that people that have been saying right now. They think this is a weak community. They think this is a marginalized community. But when I see here today, I see strength. I see all of you showing up, knowing that there are people who don't want you to be here today. That you are here and you made it. And thank you for that. with everybody but I'll still be leading and I'm still here. I'm gonna wing some of this uh, but it's all from the heart. I pinky promise you it is all from the heart. So I started this out by a poem or from a quote from Orson Shire for women who are difficult to love. You tried to change didn't you? Closed your mouth more, tried to be softer, prettier, less volatile, less awake. You can't make homes out of human beings. Someone should have already told you that. I did change. I changed who I was for the sake of the souls around me. I changed who I was for the comfort of the people around me. I changed for the happiness of others. But not once did I take into consideration my own soul or my own happiness. I was hurting, I was bruised, I was bleeding out, and I was running out of time. I had to figure out who I was before I did something horrible to myself and ultimately my life. I was in single digits when I first experienced what I now know as gender and body dysphoria. I was in single digits when I first hated my body and how it looked. I was in single digits when I knew my body wasn't right. Who I was saying wasn't right. I knew then I wasn't a woman, but I didn't fully put that together until I wasn't, I wasn't in high school anymore. This community is so, was so close-minded, I wasn't open. I wasn't opened or shown the LGBTQ community. If I had known about transgender people and the different identities that we had and the different sexualities that were out there, because it's all on a spectrum, if I had known that as a young child, I would have been so much happier growing up. I would have figured out who I was and I would be able to stand in front of you today. I wouldn't be able to stand in front of you today if I didn't have the LGBTQ community to show me who I was. We need to show up and show these children yeah. that it's okay that they're just like us. There's nothing wrong with them. There's nobody in this world who knows you better than you. There's nobody else who experiences your thoughts, your feelings, your life, except for you. There's not a single soul in this entire world that can tell you who you are. The only person that can do that is you. 
And whatever answer you decide that is, that's the right answer. Nobody else can tell you that it's wrong. Okay, guys, so up next, I'm going to introduce our yes. candidate for the 78th Congressional Ohio, Ohio Congressional District, Dylan Gross. Hold on, I just got to find my phone here for my speech. Yeah. but I am also a more proud, visible gay man living in rural Northwest Ohio. Yeah. Before I get to the rest of my speech, I'd like to open with a quote from my grandma, who if time would have given me more time with her, she would be sitting here smiling and hollering. Shortly after having come out when I was only 12 years old, knowing that the safe and loving security that I felt for my family she told me that she would always love me. Nothing would ever change that. And then the other quote that she used to people who would protest who I was and the identities that do not change, bless your heart. <laughs> As we celebrate pride in Lima, Ohio, it is important to reflect on the progress we have made towards equality and justice while acknowledging the insurmountable work that remains to be done. I believe that we must secure all equal rights for all Ohioans. It is a fundamental responsibility of state government. That is why if I am elected, I will push for legislation that protects the LGBTQ plus community from discrimination in areas such as housing, employment, healthcare, and education. It is time for Ohio to join the other 22 states that already have comprehensive LGBTQ plus protections in place. Yeah. Additionally, I will champion legislation and work with my colleagues at the State House to ban the harmful practice of conversion therapy. Right. We know that it is discredited, it does yeah. not work, and it is harmful. Instead, we should be focused on providing mental health resources and the equipment to our young people so that way they never have to feel like they should change. It is especially important that in creating legislation such as a conversion therapy ban, that it be named Layla's Law. A trans teen who killed herself because her parents and their unsupportive home and forcing this unethical and quite frankly abusive technique on her, she felt that her life was done. Another crucial issue that must be addressed is the disproportionate rates of violence and harassment that our current transgender and gender non-conforming individuals are facing and an onslaught of hateful legislation around the country. As a state, we need to take a stand against hate crimes and ensure that all Ohioans can live freely and safely without fear of persecution. I will work tireless, tirelessly to pass legislation that provides legal protections to our transgender and gender non-conforming family and friends across the state of Ohio once and for all. <laughs> Representing Allen and Old Glaze counties not only give me the opportunity to represent the great city of Lima, but plenty of rural communities. And as your next rural LGBTQ plus representative, I promise that the end of hateful bigotry and discrimination from representatives who represent farm areas stops today. Representatives like Susan Manchester, NG King, and Matt Huffman will no longer get a say in deciding legislation that attacks us because I will show them what a little lime of steel in my spine looks like when I get to the state. Yeah! 
terms of health care access in this state, it is important that we all support the guaranteed access to gender affirming care to our transgender and gender non-conforming family and friends. This includes discrimination not only in bar barring it like House Bill 68 has done, but also ensuring that pricing does not bar people who do not make enough money. Those who do not make enough money should not have to suffer in silence without the care that they need. Ew. Finally, I want us to remember that our visibility and our activism does matter. As proud members of the LGBTQ community, we have spent decades fighting against different boogeymen. In the 80s, it was that our blood was going to give you AIDS. In the 90s, it was having to let you know that we could serve in the army and it not be a big deal. In the 2000s, it was relating to George Bush's anti-gay legislation pushes Oh. Yes, <laughs> one. In the 2000s, as Pink once said, why would you hate your own daughter if she were gay? This has been the fight my entire life. You know, when I was born, my mom thought that being gay was a choice. And then I was born and she learned. As should every adult. Because bigotry is only existent because of two reasons. They hide behind religion, a religion that I follow, a religion that I pray to every night because God didn't make a mistake in making me or anyone else. And those who say that the Bible doesn't, those who say that God doesn't make mistakes yet we should burn in hell for being gay, then I ask that you read the verse again that God's love doesn't discriminate. It does not discriminate. So to whoever struggles with religious views and being gay, let me tell you that the both can exist together. Yeah. Yeah. And on the last note, I would like to remind everybody that no matter what, no matter where that this state might take us, whether it continues to pass anti-LGBTQ anti plus legislation or whether, whether we wake up tomorrow and they change, the activism and this fight does not end here. We will always have to deal with bullies like DeSantis and Trump and others at our state house. It never ends. So please, no matter how hard the fight gets and no matter how tired you get, take a nap, take a week, recover, watch your favorite show, listen to your favorite music, you know, do whatever it is that you have to do. But know that this fight is happening because of brave people and it's on our backs to continue the progress. Thank you so much for coming out. And if you are, just to add on, if you guys are a resident of Allen County, I do have my petition. We still got to get the signatures to get me on the ballot. So if you live here, please find me at some point during the event and we can definitely get those signatures going.